Hey, what's up, everybody? So <clears throat> I've got something to say that I've been holding on to for about four and a half years now. Um, I've tried to deal with this internally. Um, it's been weighing me down for some time. Um, I've tried to just let it go, uh, just like I have with the whole nightmare that happened to me and my family. But um, I feel compelled to come out now and speak the truth about a certain individual. This is not about me. I'm not trying to get into a petty little back and forth match with this, with this person. This is about you, the American people, um, no matter what side of the aisle that you sit on. This is also, and most importantly to me, uh, about my teammates in the SEAL teams. I feel like you guys should know the truth as well. So back in 2019, I was charged with war crimes, uh, premeditated murder, and uh, I was facing life in prison without parole. I sat in pretrial confinement for about nine months before my actual trial. During that time, my wife Andrea and brother Sean, along with a certain group of teammates that I had, were doing everything they could to garner support, uh, to get the truth out about what was going on with me, um, to expose all the lies and corruption around the UCMJ and everything they were doing to put me away for life. During that time, one name kept popping up. That was Dan Crenshaw. My brother wanted to go speak to him um, to try and get his support, as well as my teammates who were doing everything they could. And this was for obvious reasons. Dan was a prior SEAL. Um, they thought that this was a no-brainer and that he should get behind it, especially with all the information that was coming out. So my brother, who lives near D.C., was going to Congress almost on a daily basis, knocking on every congressman's door um, on both sides of the aisle, trying to get them to look at what was really going on uh, and get their support. One of those individuals was Dan Crenshaw. So my brother ended up talking to his staff a couple times. They gave him the runaround, um, but that did not stop him. He kept going back uh, day after day and finally got a hold of Dan. Dan told him he wanted to wait till the situation developed before he made a decision, which got it. That makes sense. Um, along with that, some of my teammates who were on that deployment who were on the ground the day of the incident, went to one of Crenshaw's fundraising parties, pulled him aside and spoke to him face to face, told him what was happening to me was complete BS, that it was chock full of lies and that I was getting screwed over. Dan told them he'll see what he can do. Once my brother got a hold of Dan, he said, uh, oh, once my brother got a hold of him a second time, Dan said that there wasn't enough information or whatever. Uh, my brother got pretty frustrated and ended up sending Dan a semi-scathing email, calling him out for being a politician and not being part of the brotherhood and not supporting a fellow SEAL. Dan replied to him and said that he would see what he could do. So as uh, my incarceration went on, and it was late into my incarceration when 50 congressmen ended up signing a petition to release me from prison so I could properly defend myself before trial. They basically were saying, give this man the constitutional rights he deserves before he goes to trial for his life. One congressman would not sign that petition. That was Dan Crenshaw. Instead, he decided to write his own petition and pretty much say I, to keep me in prison, but just to let me see my lawyers, which were rights I should have already had in the first place. At that point, we decided to scrap asking Dan for help um, and just move on. No harm, no foul. So obviously I went to trial, was found not guilty, and um, ended up retiring out of the Navy. Not long after I retired, I got invited to a turning point event by Nine Line. While at that event, I just happened to run into Dan Crenshaw, 
I saw him coming down the hallway, um, and I wanted to go up and talk to him just to get his thoughts on the whole situation and why he did not support me or why he made up that own, his own petition saying to keep me in prison. I was not angry. I just wanted to talk to him, team guy to team guy, to get his thoughts. He saw me from down the hall and immediately looked down at the ground and speed walked right past me. Didn't even give me the time of day. Um, so at that point, I was like, all right, you know, he's a politician. Um, I can kind of understand why he didn't want to support if it would hurt him in some, some capacity. So I just let it go. Not too long after that, uh, I obviously wrote the book. Uh, and when the book came out, I went to Congress to do a book signing for the 50 congressmen who did support me, who did sign that petition to get me out of prison. While there, I was pulled aside by multiple congressmen and was told that Dan Crenshaw was actively working against me behind the scenes. He was going up to each of those congressmen who were supporting me, telling, him, telling them not to support me, that I was guilty, and that it was his community, and they needed to butt out and let him handle it. <laughs> I don't know how much of an arrogant statement that could be made that Dan said it's his community. That's a joke. But regardless, after hearing this, I was pretty disgusted. It's one thing to not support me and just to back off and not do anything. But Dan, knowing the full well the truth about what was really go on, going on, still went and tried to get people not to support me and pretty much try and put me away for life without parole. The way I look at that is Dan was trying to kill me. He was doing this for political favor. He was doing this to climb the political ladder. The reason I'm putting this out right now, or I'm putting this out right now, is because if Dan Crenshaw is willing to lie, to gain favor with other politicians, to climb that political ladder, and pretty much throw somebody away for life, what do you think he's doing to the American people? This man cannot stop lying. And I'll give you some examples. Recently, Dan, or uh, David Goggins, was on a podcast with my good friend Aaron Singerman. I listened to the podcast. I listened to him expose Dan for who he really is. After that podcast, after I listened to the podcast, um, I DM'd Dave Goggins and said, great job on exposing Dan, only because I know the truth about him and what he did to me. Now, I had no communications with Goggins before this. Me and him really did not know each other. Um, but after I sent him that DM, he then sent me a text message back. And after I read it, um, this is what really compelled me to come forward and do what I'm doing now. And I'll read you the text. And this is from Crenshaw to Goggins. Hey man, listen to your Rogan podcast, good shit. I had no idea about any of that shit with that Team Six guy making YouTube videos about you and all that. Again, sorry if I made it seem like I was ever in that category. I am not. I wouldn't have tried to get you to speak at my events if I didn't respect you and your message. Like you, I've been in the public eye since about 2018 and understand very well how people will climb over your back to get higher, get more clicks, and get a little more, little more famous. Pieces of shit like Eddie Gallagher have tried to do that at my expense after I tried helping him get out of prison. That should never happen between team guys. God bless and Happy New Year. So, this text message is chock full of lies, which is not surprising. Dan sent this to Goggins after Dan himself was on a podcast talking trash on Goggins. And he is telling Goggins that he tried helping me get out of prison. Again, this man can't stop lying. He'll say whatever it takes to get people on his side and then do the opposite behind the scenes. 
This has been a repeating pattern of his since he's been in office. Now, <clears throat> I also have some documents here from my brother. It's a list in chronological order of each time he attempted to get Dan's support. He also has emails in here to Dan asking him for his support. I also have the petition that Dan wrote saying to keep me in prison. I'll have all of these on a link that you can click below and you can see for yourself. Again, the reason I'm telling you this is because this is not about me. This is about you, the American people, no matter what side of the aisle you sit behind. Just because someone is a Navy SEAL or because they were wounded in combat does not make them a good person does not mean they have character. I want you to think about that next time you vote. Look at this person's character. Look what he's saying, and then look what he's doing behind the scenes. If a person makes a decision and then has to put out a video the next day explaining why he made that decision, it's probably because he knows he didn't make the right decision. I don't want to make this political. I just want people to know who they're voting for and who is representing them. So, Dan, if you want to have a conversation, I'll be in D.C. next week, actually doing real work to support our brothers and the teams and our law enforcement and our first responders. So if you want to have a conversation, you know where to find me, buddy.